Well, hello, this is Sean, the Household Gamer. It's Marker Monday, which means we are making strategy and scheme markers out of, hopefully, things you have around the house and stuff that's not too expensive to buy. We're trying to keep things affordable here, particularly this week, because we are going to be building markers for the Fey keyword. That is Titania and Aislinn and the Autumn Nights. And if you run this crew or have played against this crew, you know you're going to need about 50 zillion undergrowth markers. 50 millimeter markers that act as severe terrain, that do all kinds of stuff for this crew. And ev to a man, everybody in this crew except for Killjoy brings one of these when they come to the table and can create them throughout the game. So the table is going to be full of these. You're going to need a ton of them. So we really wanted to be able to mass produce them. In order to build this project... You're going to need some white glue. Doesn't have to be a whole gallon. You can use a little thing. Some sand. Find You know the best place to find sand? Find a volleyball court. They're going to have good sand down there. Some of this foliage you can get from Joann's and Michael's. It's like $1.50 a stick. I got five or six of these, and they're, they're going to last me the whole project. Hot glue gun. A hobby knife or some clippers. And then I assume that you have paint. You're going to need paint. And then finally, you're going to need a whole mess of 50 millimeter markers. I found this deal on Amazon that you can get 100 of them for like $10.79. Now I have 100 of these. They're wooden. They're exactly 50 mil. They're light. Uh, they can take a lot of abuse. And uh, they're pretty terrific. So get yourself some markers off Amazon. You can make all, anything, all your 50 millimeter needs can be taken up by these guys. So the first thing that we're going to do is paint some white glue on the top of these markers and put sand on them. Usually I will water down my white glue when I'm attaching sand to plastic bases, but this is wood and it drinks up the glue a bit more. I tried to do one with watered down glue and it just fell off. So use the straight up white glue on there and don't be shy. Just get a whole puddle full of white glue on. And then instead of just sprinkling the sand, I like to bury the marker underneath the sand and kind of mash it down, press it down. I pull it out, tap the big rocks off. Uh, sometimes I'll hold it up my mouth and kind of poof, poof, do a little, do a little poof action a little air over it and that'll blow the big stuff off you miss a spot when you're putting on the glue that's okay go back in with a little dabble do you sprinkle it in there but don't go back in with the brush and try and slap glue on there because you're just going to move around all that sand you already put on and then let it dry don't go messing with it while it is still the least bit wet after that thing is completely dry i want you to spray paint it after you spray paint then you're going to apply the real paint we picked a couple of different colors a deep brown up to a yellow just get some on a nice big brush, wipe it off on a paper towel until it's almost all gone, and then just lay into this black and do as many layers as you need to build up the color. Uh, you're going to be putting foliage on top anyway. Then you're going to cut yourself some foliage. You can cut these to any length you want. You can use great big long ones. You can cut it in half and just use the end. But for each piece, we're using maybe five, six, seven pieces of foliage. You can go more if you want, but with this way, you can still kind of see through it, and if you need to edge a model onto it, it's not going to just absolutely be floating above the, the battlefield. So in order to glue these on once you've got them cut, put just a little blob of hot glue on the end. You don't have to use a ton. Put that nice bead of hot glue on there, and then just pfft, stick it where you want, hold it for a second. This glue is going to set up, and then it's done. This is easy as pie. Pick a diff couple different colors of foliage. Go look. They have a million different kinds of plastic foliage at these hobby stores, and it's cheap as dirt. So buy yourself a bunch of them. They'll last you forever. Once the foliage is on, uh, we like to put a little static grass on there. I didn't put this in the recipe list. It's not essential, but, uh, you know, it makes things makes things a little pretty. Gussies it up a little bit. Make sure this stuff doesn't get over the carpet, though. If a, if a wind blows, if you got a fan going, you're done. You are going to be picking static grass out of your life for the rest of your life. Uh, and there you have it. Uh, we produced five of these bases. I'm probably going to have to produce about 15 more uh, just to make sure you have enough. But once you have these 50 millimeter wooden bases, you can make all kinds of stuff. And you can use 50 mils to just make kind of raw scenery. This doesn't have to be reserved for your Titania game. You can put a bunch of these together and now you got a forest. Remember, you always want to build scenery out of stuff that you got lying around your house. With miniature games, it's so teeny. Look in your drawer. You have something. There's something down in the garage you can use. You don't need to go out and buy a bunch of fancy stuff. We can root around and find find our way to some to some cheap scenery. Uh, this is the Household Gamer. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and tell your friends. We're gonna 
be coming back at you with more modeling and more battle reports and fun. So uh, stay cool and stay safe.